Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and this evening we'll be having a look at the latest GFS, GM, ESIM, WF and GFS ensembles and we'll have a look at the potential for some snow uh, next week uh, looking at the GFS precipitation charts at the end of the video. Do remember if you enjoy my videos make sure you do like and subscribe as it really does help me out. Now we're currently having a look at the uh, latest GFS run and we've had a very pleasant day quite widely today. Further northwards, there is still some rain um, on that weather front, but many areas in England, Wales, Ireland have seen a very warm day. Quite cloudy early on, but the sun broke through around early afternoon, and we saw highs of around 20, 21 degrees. I haven't seen the official top temperature yet, but I definitely know it got above 20 and close to 21 degrees in sort of central England and in the London area. Um, so very pleasant day and it's going to be even warmer tomorrow and potentially again still warm on Wednesday. But we're really looking at what's going to be happening towards the end of this week, a week into the weekend and the start of the following week. This so is looking like we could be going into a really cold polar plunge. Now it's this really, it's this southwesterly wind with the Euro high which is causing this um, sort of mini heat wave we've got euro high which means it's going to be dry um and we've got southwesterly wind which is bringing up generally quite mild air it's not even that warm air there um and, and it just means that temperatures are allowed to skyrocket uh, as soon as the sun gets out uh, so we can get into low 20s but beyond that the high pressure does push up towards greenland now we were looking at perhaps a week ago that there's potential for quite cold conditions coming in from the east from this now it hasn't really developed and we're just going to be bringing in a cool sort of northeasterly feel especially on the eastern coast so you're going to feel pretty chilly further inland still feel relatively mild but temperatures will drop down to mid to low teens uh, maybe 12 13 degrees um I'm feeling a little more chilly with those winds towards sort of Good Friday into the Easter weekend. But it's this low that's coming out of Greenland. If we have a look at the upper airs, you can see it is brutally cold in there. Uh, some of the coldest air on Earth at the moment is over Greenland and it is plunging its way towards the UK. Now it's going to be heavily modified before it gets here by the strong April sun. But it's going to be very, very cold early next week. Now, if you look at this, high pressure retrogresses up towards Greenland. And these northerly winds plunge through the UK. Air coming all the way from the North Pole, Svalbard, with brutally cold northerly winds feeling very, very cold indeed. On the thermometer, maybe be about 4 or 5 degrees quite widely. A bit colder over hills and overnight temperatures plummeting yeah, into quite hard frost so generally on the thermometer it's not actually that cold it's four or five degrees which is an average temperature for the middle of winter but it's early april um and with that biting wind of that north it's going to feel like we're plunged back into january um and there will be quite a few heavy sort of convective showers around uh, and there's still the chance we do see some features some occluded fronts um, some convergence zones which could enhance any shower activity where we do see those showers there's always the possibility with this cold of an air mass we do see some snow now at the moment it's looking like really anywhere with this sort of air mass could see falling snow but for accumulating snow it's looking like generally mostly on the hills um, as it's it just needs to be that degree, uh, that, that, that it needs to be those couple degrees colder. Lowland areas, I'd be surprised if you saw any, anything more than maybe a dusting overnight. Um, but, you know, you can't rule it out if you do. If everything does align, it's overnight, weather fronts move in. There is still a chance that we do, you could see some significant snow overnight. But any time in the day, when the sunshine gets out, it will rapidly melt any wintry precipitation that does fall but when we are under the showers uh, and those convective showers we could see a lot of hail growl pool sleet and snow falling in a short period of time so it's going to be really one to watch uh, for the short range forecast near next week but we remain in this very cold air mass with this northerly wind for sort of the rest of the week before we see another northerly plunge with an air of low pressure that could be interesting with cold air in place more cold air following behind it that could be more of a widespread snow event now again it is getting further into april so the sun is much stronger and daytime highs are going to be around four or five degrees. It will really depend on the timings with that. If that falls overnight, there's all the chance that we could see widespread snow with that. Dare I say widespread snow and potentially blizzards. But if it fell up, falls in the day, more likely to be snow over hills. Maybe some snow to lower area, lower, lower levels, but hardly accumulating 
other than maybe on grassy surfaces. So it's really going to be timings with this one, whether we're going to see disruptive snow potentially, or it's just going to uh, look more like a winter wonderland and as soon as precipitation stops it really all melts away um, so it's really going to be one to watch for timings nearer the uh, nearer uh, to next week beyond that we remain in quite a cold northerly airflow and another plunge of cold air towards the end of the run before it does look like westerlies are trying to inch their way back in but we do remain in that northerly airflow dare i say if this happened in january i know I've, in, other, in other videos i've said why this never happens in January. It's generally northerly winds are more favoured in, in spring simply because the stratospheric warm, uh, stratospheric winds are uh, not as strong. The jet stream's a bit weaker, so it's more of a chance we see this application and these northerly winds. But if we did see this pattern in winter, we would be plunged into the freezer for a good two weeks, probably. Um, from this sort of Friday, Saturday this week, all the way to the end of the run, if this run verified in the middle of January, we would be in the freezer. Temperatures wouldn't be getting above freezing, we would have a lot of snow around, regardless of where you are, and it would be a very similar picture to what we saw in December 2010, the December to remember the snow. But luckily, it's coming in April, so even though it can still be disruptive, it's very much likely to not be anywhere near as disruptive as it could be in the middle of winter. It's likely just to be an inconvenience to those who want to enjoy the relaxation of COVID rules outside. Um, as it's going to feel quite bitingly cold. Now, if we have a look at the uh, GM ROM, very similar pattern to the GFS, and we do pull in those northeasterly and easterly cool winds but nothing too substantially cold before we do see that plunge of brutally colder in from the north very strong northerly winds very cold air mass spreads across the country um it's gonna be interesting to see where we do see that minus how far south that minus 10 line does come through a couple of days ago we we're seeing some runs getting the minus 15 line through At this moment it doesn't look like it's gonna be getting that cold as again this time it's always difficult to get anything that cold but minus 10 line is getting into scotland and getting into parts of northern england as well before the end of the GF gm run is looking like it's going to be swept away by the atlantic there's still some northern blocking around, so you can't rule out another cold northerly wind. But the further we get into April, that uh, by by every single day, every single day that cold air over the North Pole is diminishing in, in severity and in size. Before the time we get to maybe July, uh, June, July, there really isn't any um, cold air, uh, significant cold air aloft left. Finally, if we have a look at the ECMs OBF, very similar patterns to GFS and GM in the shorter term, even to the weekend, very similar pattern. Then we see that northerly plunge. If we briefly have a look at the upper air temperatures, you can see very, very cold, a bit more of a west, uh, a bit more westerly with this cold plunge, more of it out in the Atlantic, which would limit the potential for snow further eastwards uh, and potential for it going very cold further eastwards. But again, just really one to watch. And if we have a look at the temperature deviation, brutally cold air coming down from the north and as we end the run you can see low pressure tries to push into that cold air and we would see some a very significant snow event there over parts of scotland who are still in that cold air generally elsewhere just rainy um and generally quite cold before the atlantic does try and get in but there's still a lot of northern blocking around so it's looking like even though this cold spell is likely to end after maybe three four five days it's still likely to remain fairly cool as we still got a lot of northern blocking and uh, a decent amplification in the jet, meaning the airflow, even though it's not going to be a direct northerly like we're going to see next Monday, it's likely to be sort of a, a northerly or north uh, westerly sort of airflow, which means it's going to be generally cooler than average. If we now have a look at the GFS ensembles, you can see quite warm and mild at the moment. Then we see that dip towards Good Friday as cooler air comes in from the northeast before we see a big plunge of about 10 degrees 10 to 15 degrees 850 hpa all the way down to an average of around minus seven minus eight for easter monday uh and some even going much colder than that just can't rule out getting down to minus 10 or maybe minus 15 and even colder for the north remember this is london i'm looking at and then we do have a very very slow climb out it doesn't get above minus five for a good four or five days which means it's on the surface, although it may get above freezing overnight, likely to remain frosty, cold, and yeah, anyway, in the day, still maybe five or six, seven degrees, and feeling very, very chilly indeed. Some precipitation around, not massive, because it doesn't look like there's going to be huge frontal um, snowfall uh, or, or precipitation, 
but there's still a decent chance you could see some falling snow regardless of where you are as it's looking like with this cold air mass anywhere could really be seeing some falling snow just significant accumulating snow will be very difficult to pin down and, uh, until much nearer the time if we do briefly have a look at the new snow depth you can see in london there is a decent chance we do see some snow a couple of summer members going for a lot of snow but again very difficult to tell at this stage if we have a look at the two meter temperatures you can see generally five six degrees probably uh, a little bit cooler uh, and feeling a lot colder um in that northerly wind and any and and under any showers those temperatures will plummet you could be looking at five or six day five five or six degrees at maybe one or two p.m a hail shower or snow shower comes in at three p.m temperature could plummet down to one or two degrees so it's going to be that sort of um, very on and off. You, in the sunshine, wind dies down a bit. It could feel very pleasant. But as soon as that wind picks up, and as soon as those showers rattle in, it's going to feel very, very cold. And overnight, looking like we could be seeing a frost for maybe four or five consecutive days, which would be potentially damaging to any gardeners out there. So make sure you keep watch of any frost. Um, uh, make sure you check up on the Met's office forecasts um, near at the time. Now finally, we'll have a look at the precipitation time. Now this is just really for fun at this stage, just to see uh, the potential, as these really are not good, from, uh, for good for, especially for snow, out of maybe two, or th uh, above, uh, until maybe two or three days away, then we can start seeing some decent, um, decent predict predictions. But if we run through, you can see that heavy rain in the northwest, it will die out slowly but potentially will turn to bits of snow as some cold air comes in from the north. Then it goes generally dry for everyone on Thursday, Friday, Saturday, a little bit cooler, but dry. So start of the Easter weekend is going to be all right, fairly pleasant. Nothing too cold, nothing too warm, but at least it's going to be uh, no precipitation. And then on Sunday, you can see the showers coming in from the north, and there's potential for be quite an uh, extensive cold front, and that'll be something interesting to watch. Um, as you can see, that cold front there, that could be very potent, um, it's narrow band of convective showers, snow, sleet, hail, or even just rain. It's going to be difficult to see and pin down what's going to happen with that. But if it is a well-defined cold front, we could be seeing some very dramatic scenes where temperatures are 12, 13 degrees and drop down to 5 or 6 degrees in the space of half an hour with hail, snow, or um, rain, squalliness all mixed into that. So it could be very interesting watching that on Sunday evening and we'll have to keep a very close eye on that. Beyond that, everyone goes into the cold air mass. You can see those snow showers packing into northern and northeastern areas. Still some rain in land, but still quite a lot of snow around and we could be seeing the snow quite widely all the way through Tuesday and Wednesday as the winds veer more easterly, um, more uh, snow inland and for eastern areas. And then we see another cold northerly plunge and potentially some more snow. So it's going to be very interesting to see that. If we have a look at the snow depth again, don't take these literally. It's just uh, the prospects. Uh, and it just shows you where we're likely to see falling snow. But you can see quite a lot of snow over highlands. And uh, that's that's a fairly decent chance that comes off. Elsewhere, there is a chance we see some decent snow in even central southern areas again. But I wouldn't bank on using that exact amount in snow depth. But still could see uh, a decent amount of falling snow and you can see it melts away very quickly in the space of a few hours and generally quite a lot of falling snow so it's going to be very interesting to see that next week all those out there who want summer weather uh, and like the summer, right, right, summer weather right now and warm temperatures make sure you do cherish the next couple of days and meet uh, meet all your friends in your groups of six outdoors but for those who enjoy winter conditions and snow, you may just get one last hurrah in to the start of April, as we are likely going to see some snow once again quite widely. So yeah, it's going to be very interesting to watch over the next couple of days. I'm getting to the stage now, even though I do enjoy snow, that I kind of just want summer to come and the nice pleasant 20 to 25 degree days like we've had today, where it's really pleasant to be outside in shorts and t-shirts. I'm kind of wanting that now, but, um, you know, you can, you can never, well, given the really poor winters we've had over the last sort of five years, um, 
uh, you can never say no to a bit of snow. But hopefully it's not too disruptive, um, especially for stuff, stuff like the vaccine rollout and stuff. Hopefully it doesn't affect that too much, but it'll be, it'll be interesting to see what happens next week. But anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Subscribe and I'll see you again for another video soon.